Houston police still need your help to find a gang of criminals who may be responsible for more than a dozen burglaries. Thieves targeting two other businesses in this area. They broke in through this window. November 19th, 2018. The Timberwood area of Houston, Texas. 3 a.m. A brazen burglary is underway at a pizza restaurant. They started smashing the glass with a crowbar. Then they climbed in. This is breaking and entering 101. That they've got their hoods up, they're wearing gloves, they're covered in head to toe, um, just trying to keep their identities concealed. And these burglars have a unique technique. Get down low, crawl, then roll. We have motion detectors and they're part of the alarm. And that's probably why they were rolling around in the restaurant. This looks like an action movie like there's a laser beam that's going to touch them and the alarm's going to go off and the bars are going to shut down on top of them if they if they trigger the alarm they could also be you know afraid of other like infrared cameras seeing them the thieves have either forgotten or maybe they just don't care but the cameras are recording their every move and they head straight for the safe they knew directly where to go and, and how to get there these guys were very prepared if they know someone's not in the area and, and it's worth the risk for them, they're going to they're gonna take it. And with an assortment of tools ready, they immediately get to work. They look around and they, they ransack. They're looking for anything that's of value. They smash the safe with a crowbar, sledgehammer, anything they have. These thieves cannot pry the safe open. They're beating the heck out of it, trying to get inside. And then at one point, we see one of them pull out their cell phone. They seem to be calling for help. After about 30 minutes, they finally give up. So even though they weren't able to open up the safe and get the money that they were looking for, they didn't want to leave empty handed. They did take my boom box, my drill, and my flashlight. Their most baffling haul? some children's toys. Bunch of stuffed animals and things from the game room. Then, crawling out the same way they came in, the thieves disappear into the night. Jesse learns about the theft when he arrives to open up a few hours later. When we got to the store, we uh, checked the cameras. We noticed they crawled around all over the restaurant to try to find the money. Thankfully, the two grand that was locked in the safe remains untouched. But these bandits have caused another $2,000 in property damage for Jesse. Well, these burglars, they need to be caught. They're a nuisance. They're a plague. Angry, Jesse takes the video from the cameras he installed only six months earlier to the local news. Three thieves rolling across the floor of a Mr. Gaddy's restaurant at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, they came over here with a crowbar, and they sat there and smashed it about 20 times. These guys watch too much TV, too many movies. The crooks are mocked for not thinking about the security cameras. They made a serious miscalculation about where the surveillance camera was pointing. And they get a catchy name. Meet the Inchworm Ooh. Bandits, huh? The Inchworm Bandits. The staff is actually taken to calling them the Inchworm Bandits. It really just nods back to the fact of the movements that they were doing across the restaurant to try to keep low and do this really quietly. Um, and it's also a catchy name. Both police and the media soon realize that the same Inchworm crew is caught on multiple surveillance cameras, committing multiple burglaries. It's just a style that seems to be happening all the time now. There's an audible alarm. Uh, they'll back away. They'll wait a little while, see if the police show up right away. If not, they start with crawling on the ground as slowly as possible. I mean, they're inchworming their way across my dining room floor. They like to hit the same type of establishments. All these businesses are set up the exact same, so they know exactly where to go. Typically, it's like uh, the manager's office or the cashier. Uh, the cash machines, the uh, registers behind the, uh, the counters. And whoever they are, they're extremely well organized. They'll have lookouts. You'll see a cell phone lit up or on speaker. They're getting the intel from outside. And so they, they know exactly how much time they have. Jesse pleads with the band of bandits to stay away from small business owners. I don't know. These guys need to get a life. 
They need, they need something to do. Leave us alone. Get a job. Get to work. Everybody else in the area works hard. Why can't they? And he hopes the public mocking will stop them. They'll be too embarrassed to, 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 to come out again. But these thieves have other plans. Wait for it. Jesse gets hit again. The bandits return, and this time... They grind the safe open. Incredibly, one year after brazen robbers hit Jesse's restaurant, they come back to steal from him again. You know, there's so much work out there, but these guys, they feel it's easier to just go out and rob from, from people like me. They bring in bigger tools. They came prepared. They even had a grinder to cut open the safe. They bring in these power tools that are battery operated that will cut just as fast as anything else. They bring extra blades. They bring extra power tools, extra batteries, because they know how long it takes typically to get into these safes. This time, they managed to get away with $3,000 cash. Some of it was tips for servers. I know for certain it was the same guys. It was the same inchworm bandits that did it. Jesse is stunned that the bold bandits had the nerve to hit him again. We have uh, motion sensors, we have glass breaks, uh, we have a 24 hour monitoring, but the, the alarm system didn't work. You pay for a sense of protection and these guys, they violated it. The robbers continue to hit one restaurant after another, and they're especially fond of fast food chains. Popeyes, chicken, Kentucky Fried Chicken, churches, Taco Bells, Pizza Hut. Anywhere where they know where those saves are at, they're, they're hitting those locations. I think it's highly organized. These guys are probably a crew of 15 of them that do it. Police say the inchworm bandits have likely committed hundreds of robberies. Thieves are targeting their pizza shops and neighboring businesses. Thieves took nearly $6,000 from the three pizzerias. And they believe it's part of a coordinated gang effort, where they'll just take the safe if they can't crack it. These crews are coming from a lot of gangs. Some of these gangs are working together where typically they wouldn't. They want to go make some money. The one thing that unites all gangs, money. And cash will make you do some strange things, like doing the inchworm at 3 a.m. at a pizza parlor with your boys. A lot of those restaurants, they typically don't do the money drop. They have the safes there that they drop the money into. The accessibility to the cash is there, so that's what they're looking to get. Just if it's 5,000, 3,000, 2,000, that's a good score for them. I'm pretty upset about it. I wish these guys would get caught. The video caught on Jesse's security cameras from the first burglary captures what appears to be a getaway car, a silver SUV. But police don't have much else to go on. So unfortunately, we're often left with really grainy video. And this is a burglar's best friend. A lot of the videos are poor quality, without some type of evidence left behind, cell phone, fingerprint, DNA evidence. It's very difficult to identify these suspects. Even though there's a lot of talk online about these interim bandits um, being stupid or not just being the brightest criminals, at the end of the day, I think they actually did a pretty good job at their tradecraft. That they take pretty great care in protecting their identities with wearing gloves, making sure they have baggy clothes on, keeping their hoods up and things like that. And also just hitting like local family businesses, knowing that these places probably don't have the money to equip some of this high tech security. This looks like nonsense, but it keeps on working. These bandits seem to be fearless. And unfortunately, because it's a nonviolent crime, the reality is those suspects aren't going to stay in jail or go to prison very long. There's consequences, but they're just not afraid of them. These criminals may be getting away with it, but I'm not impressed until they start doing flips. There's definitely an element to this where, you know, once you start to build up your confidence with committing a crime like this over and over, you definitely start to think that you're untouchable. Some business owners are responding by putting their cash elsewhere. We've had a lot of business start to leave their registers open and their their registers on top of the counter, kind of to signify, hey, look, there's nothing in here. The restaurants might as well hang a big sign in the window that says, we take all our money home at night. 
As for Jesse, he's decided the best solution is to look at the bright side of things. He and his staff now use that video of the inchworm bandits rolling across the restaurant floor as a source of endless entertainment. We look back at it, we laugh. You know, getting only hit twice in the grand scheme of things isn't too bad. These inchworm bandits, they're gonna mess up and we're gonna be there and, and catch them when we can. We're always gonna be looking for them.